straight understanding. That's what I know. If you ain't heard, what's the word when the word has been served? In? That's when you broke. Say yo with your chest, don't digress. Eh? Keep it fresh. Speak your whole truth. Never give nothing less. Gotta give your all. Give your best. If you try, you see failure, but aim for success. Yes. Too blessed to be stressed. Coming at you sideways, and I'm with the finesse. Talk that talk, ain't nobody gon' tell you. Talk that talk, ain't nobody gon' tell you. Walk that walk, let your body propel you. Walk that walk, it's out. Nobody but talk that talk, ain't nobody gon' tell you. Talk that talk, ain't nobody gon' tell you. Walk that walk, let your body propel you. Yes sir, yes sir. Will do is what you won't do. Just go ahead, be yourself. It'll haunt you. If you try do something not you. Talk your talk, do your thing. It won't stop you. Hi, welcome to Lana Live, a hybrid reality show podcast featuring unique experiences and individuals from a journalistic perspective through a human lens. And today with us, we have an amazing, uh, globally celebrated event coordinator, party planner. Um, someone that I consider a party god, the one and only Preston Bailey. Hi, Lana. How are you? Hi. Party guy. Party, party guy. guy. I That's am so one. happy to have you here. That is great. It's I, good to be here. I am a fan. I have been admiring your work forever and read all your books. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I've been reading so much about your work and seeing the most incredible, unique events and experiences that you have done. How did you start? How did you get into this business? Tell us about the early years. The early years. Then I started this business because I needed a job. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> you know, years ago, I was completely broke. I remember in going into supermarkets and stool stealing steaks for dinner. Oh my God. And things were really, really bad. And a very good friend of mine, an interior designer by the name of Vicente Wolf, mm -hmm. in a moment of brilliant, as we were driving back from the beach, he says to me, by the way, Preston, I have a few clients that needs weekly flowers. Why don't you give it a try? And, and that's you had never done flowers. Before. Never. I wish I could give you stories that I came from Panama and my mother loved flowers. <laughs> No, 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 no. Wow. The rainforest is there, but I didn't have any clue. And, you know, the first few days and years was a bit of a nightmare. I remember going to the floor market in New York City and being so, like, terrified. Oh, my God. That I would wait, go wait, in there. Not, so this started in New York City or in Panama? Where in you New from? York City. I. How old were you when you came to New York? I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. and the reason that I came to New York because I was getting into a lot of drug problems in Panama. What? Uh huh. No, no, uh, no, no. Hold I know. No, no. That's Wait. another story. Wait. <laughs> what do you mean? You look so proper and so just perfect. What do I, you mean? I, I need to know. First of all, did you do drugs? Did you sell drugs? What did we do? I'm happy to say that I've been sober for 30 years. But before That's that, incredible. I That's was sweet. a complete addict. And, you know, it wasn't even the great drugs. I mean, I was into crack and cocaine and you name it, I did it. Uh, so, you know, I have this history of being an addict. Oh, and my of God. And of course, lately I've became a workout. I work out a lot. That's my addiction. Dad and sex. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love sex. Hello. <laughs> Listen, sex, money, and power are my three favorite daily supplements I have to have. It's a good addiction, I right? Know, right. Yeah. Well, one second. So in Panama, what how did you get into drugs? Were you is this like in high school or before? Yes. And you know, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Panamanian marijuana. You know, of course, at the time there was like the Mexican and the Panamanian that was the strongest. And I started selling it at the time. And my mother and my parents said, listen, we have to get you out of here. Mm. And I had an aunt that lived in Brooklyn. And, you know, this poor people, they scraped their pennies together, got me on a flight and shipped me off to New York. How long, have, have, how long were you doing drugs at that point? For like how many years? You know, I was a teenager mm -hmm. and I was 19. I started maybe when I was 15 or 16 years. You know, you smoked that first mm -hmm. joint and, mm -hmm. oh my God, I've just discovered heaven. Oh my gosh. And it was never about alcohol, by the way. I was always into drugs. And of course, coming to New York City and discovering this culture of the 70s of partying mm -hmm. and sex and 
Studio 54. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so there. I don't know if you know, but as an immigrant child at the age of seven, my family immigrated from Ukraine, from Odessa, right. Ukraine. We also immigrated to Brooklyn. I lived in the hood. And Where in Brooklyn? Before, Were you in Flatbush? Were you in Flatbush? Ocean Avenue and Kings Highway. Oh, my God. You're that cute. was my neck of the woods. And so, yeah, Studio 54, Limelight, Dan Soteria. But well, wait clubs. a minute! You were seven, and you knew about that. Oh, were you? Well, no, I didn't about the New time. York until I was nineteen. Nineteen years old. Yeah. Did you go to studio ever? Yes, I had a fake ID. Unfortunately, you know, when you look good yeah. and you have an older boyfriend, you can pretty much go anywhere. And they weren't as bad back then. Right. Of course. You know, of course. But I did have some really good fake IDs. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I've learned about Studio Fifty Four, which is what we do today, which is transforming spaces. Mm -hmm. And I remember in going there, I don't know, for different parties. I have pictures, by the way, with Diana Ross, and I have pictures with, I we mean, need like, to see. I'll, I'll give them to you. But I remember in going there, and all of a sudden, the entire place was transformed for an event. There was a designer by the name of Rennie, that he's still around, by the way, that used to do this amazing transformation. Wow. And in a way, I think that I wasn't there in my business yet, but I remember doing you, this. You were inspired. Exactly, exactly. So tell me, when you got to Brooklyn to stay with some relatives, and you were 19. I was 19 years and old. Then, and then? And you know, I remember arriving in Brooklyn and seeing Brooklyn, and it's like, this is New York? I mean, I know. it's like, well, wait a minute, what the hell? This is not New York. I know. But then one Sunday, I took the subway, mm -hmm. and I remember getting off at Rockefeller Plaza. And walking out, and it's like, wow. oh my God, I am home. Yeah. And you know, and since then, of course, New York City has been my home. Mm. So how did you get from the early days? Well, let me just go back for a minute. So did you have to go to um, like a rehab facility, or did you do a program? Because I think that you're such an inspiration. Well, I did drugs until 1990. But in 1987, I was lucky enough to meet a therapist that knew about drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And since then, throughout trial and error, it took me a few years. And I remember in 1990, and this is an amazing story, and I gave up drugs because of my event. And the reason why, one Friday night, I remember the date, it was May 21st, 1990. I had a wedding to do, but at the time I was so stoned and drunk that I thought the wedding was on Saturday and actually it was on Friday. And you know, I've just started and mm -hmm. you know, so remembering arriving and of course, you know, there was no cell phone numbers mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. So like pages. Correct. Papers. I didn't even have that at the time, yeah. but I was so stoned that the client was waiting for me for the wedding actually that was supposed to be on Friday. And I was thinking it was Saturday, and I arrived the following day. And you know, Lana, that was for me like hitting bottom. They were completely upset, if you can imagine. And you know, I kind of I said, this is it. And I remember getting on my knees and saying, listen, God, you need to help me. You really, really need to help me. And May 21st, 1990, that was the last time I had a drink or I did any drugs. Wow, yeah. that's unbelievable. But it's not easy, by the way. I don't know sure. if you have ever dealt with addiction. In in my family, I have. Right. You know, yes. Especially drug addiction. I know. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's rough. And as someone who is on the outside of it, but inside also because they're your loved ones, your family right. members, it's, um, it's heartbreaking. And it's also, it, it, it made me very angry because yeah. it's a choice. I think it's a choice. It is a choice. But and it's you can choose to do it or you can choose not to do it. But I'm sure it's much more complicated and way more difficult. I think so it's one of those things that doesn't matter what anyone tells you, either your friend or your family, yeah. that you know, you're destroying yourself. And nothing is going to make you change until you decide, until you sure. realize that you have a real problem, you know, and that you need help. And again, the higher power, I think, was the best help. You are such an inspiration. I am blown away. I did not know this about you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Wow. Okay, so how did you get in? How did you become you?
Well, how, what was that journey like from, from your humble beginnings to doing, um, let's see, Apple, LeBron, mm -hmm. Serena Williams, mm -hmm. Oprah? I really think that, I don't know if you'll agree that there are certain angels and certain souls that are walking around Absolutely. this earth sure. with us that are so life-changing and affect so many people's lives. And she's one of them. A hundred percent. She's really one of those energy that when you meet her, you realize like immediately there's something very unique about this person. You know, as a kid, as a new immigrant child, uh, when I lived in Brooklyn, we didn't speak English. We just, you know, we, we just arrived. And I remember that I learned to speak English from school and Oprah. Right. She used to be on Channel 7, which was ABC at the time when I was right. home from school. And I think she was on at 4, 4 to 5, um, 4 p.m. Right. I would rush home from school, get some homework done, watch Oprah, which was like my God, yeah. my church, and then go back to homework. I, I thought she was the most incredible person. Not only that, I think she changed. And the gifts that she gave away. Oh my God. Of course. Yes. Cars for you. The cars for you. This Everybody. For... Here's a car for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, she's she was incredible. really extraordinary. So anyway, um, all these amazing people that you've done, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones and everyone, how did you get to be this incredibly famous, super talented celebrity wedding slash party planner designer? from your early days in Brooklyn. Yeah, and again, you know, as I said, I started by doing weekly flowers that will arrive and, you know, put flowers beside the nightstand or the, you know, the dinner table. I remember this one client, she walked in and I didn't know, by the way, I'm just getting going and I have these beautiful flowers on her table. And she's like, Preston, what are these? Of course, I didn't know and I made it up. Oh, these are Floridians from South America. Oh my God. <laughs> So, that's you know, incredible. talking about winging it, and that's exactly what I did. So you're just naturally gifted by no. God because you had no, you, well, you weren't educated. You didn't go to school for this, right? Correct. But, you know, I think any of us, if we're hungry enough, mm. if we're willing to work hard enough, I agree. if we believe that things are going to, believe is a big part of my life, by the way. You know, I'm a big believer. You know, I speak it, I talk it, you know, I wrote a book about it. I know. I read your book. When are you writing the second? I don't know. I think my second is going to have to be a sex Bible. Ah. We'll see. <laughs> Working on it. Can I work with you? Can I? Oh my God, I love you? that. Yes, please. <laughs> well, you know, so here I am doing these weekly flowers and this client says to me, listen, my daughter's getting married. Could you please do her wedding, this Jewish wedding? And of course, I'm like, yeah, why not, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember that I didn't even know what a hoopla was. Mm -hmm. I remember going into the library and saying, by the way, do you have books on hooplas? <laughs> it's like, what is this black man talking about? <laughs> so eventually they got that I wanted a hoopla. And, you know, I did my first wedding. I did never forget in the Rainbow Room. And for the first 10 years was a time of learning, of being learning about, I think, which is the base for my business today. You have to try to do something different, mm -hmm. which of course today with Instagram is not the easiest thing in the world, but I think that's really the base of what I had back then and I've continued and I've made me, I think, part of who I am today. And then I remember, I think it was in 1997, an angel walked into my life and that was Joan Rivers. Oh my God. God. Oh my, this woman changed my life. She really did. How? Melissa was getting married. I remember that wedding. It was spectacular. The winter the wonderland. The winter wonderland. Nobody will ever forget uh, that wedding. It was unbelievable. I remember stalking those pictures. Yes. This woman changed my life. She really did. And she, I remember she said, listen, Preston, I want Melissa to weddings to look like if you went to the opera and the curtain just went up and the stage is there. So she was as crazy as I am. Is, she is that what you're saying? Just, by the just way, crazy. We're going to talk about our, our craziness very soon. Or, or am I crazier? Do I win in the crazy department? I think you do a little bit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give off diplomas and I think you're going to get one. Thank That's you. I'm very flattered. But I'll anyhow, so Joan really, after that wedding, she introduced me to opera. 
And obviously I was in the opera a few times. I did her 50th birthday. She was part of my 60th birthday. And yeah. you know, once you're touched by Oprah, I you might as well be touched by God. Oh my, in a way, yes. I know. And you know, and I think Joan, um, you know, I got married 10 years ago in February. She did my wedding before she passed away. I still miss her. I think she was like, no one knew about the gentle part of her. her. Everybody mm -hmm. thought she was this crazy comedian, mm -hmm. but there was a part of her that really was very giving and loving. I'll she, bet. Yeah. I'll bet. She came into my office and bought that. presents for all of my assistants, you know, and she gave Very everybody sweet. attention. So anyhow, so she was a big part, I think, of really mm -hmm. helping me where I am today. Do you still stay in touch with Melissa? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. And her son. Her son is, a, I mean, he's 21 years old now, which is amazing. So you have done the most incredible weddings with incredibly beautiful couples that we think of as the ultimate love uh, lovebirds, you know, the weddings of couples that we think is going to last a lifetime, mm, right? Mm -hmm. Are many of those couples still together or not? I panic sometimes when I run into one of my former brides or groom, you know, because again, it's like, hi, person, how are you? And, you know, I don't have a very good memory. And normally I don't remember the names, yeah. <laughs> but I remember the event. You know, you see the person and it's, oh, that was a... Uh, at the St. Regis 10 years ago, but I panicked because I never know if they're still married. And I think this is one of the most tragic part of our business that we have this one day that is so unique and it's so special that we spend so much energy and, mm -hmm. you know, you get to know these people as, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my clients are, you know, I'm, I'm there for them. Not, you know, I'm, it's not about me, yeah. it's about them. And all of a sudden, it's, oh, but by the way. You get to know us intimately. It's almost like a relationship with your OBGYN uh, or your attorney. Absolutely, or, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And I think, and again, we're going to talk very soon about us working together, which I have a so lot sad. to say. I'm excited, but yeah. I have a lot to say. But it's, it is sad when you run into them. And I said, oh, but oh, no, no, I got a divorce, you know, like two years later. Does that, does that make you... Um, feel depressed or are you disappointed as a person that so many people who go through this amazing journey and this experience of being together and getting married and walking down the aisle and then, you know, just calling it quits instead of working on it. You know, Lana, you told me earlier that you've been married for 31 years. Yes, and I still haven't killed my husband. And honestly, I don't know how because after 31 years, oh my God. Right, right. But you know, I personally think the key to happiness is uh, a lot of alone time, being right. happy with your own stuff. I absolutely but agree 100%. If I'm I had too much time with my husband, oh my God, no, we would. I think one of the deaths of any marriage is boredom. Yep. I mean, I don't want to be bored. I don't want to bore anyone. Exactly. But anyhow, it is very sad to see these people. But my point is that, you know, relationships are very difficult. Oh, yes. And, you know, I'm going to be 74 years old next year, and I know how challenging it is. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, my God. But, you know, it is very challenging, and yeah. it's, it, you know, to be with one soul and to really accept them for who they are. Mm, that's the worst part, most challenging part, I think. You know, and to learn to really celebrate them in a way that is not fake. You don't want to say, oh, my, you, you did this wrong and you were bad. And it's not about that. It's yeah. about... You did something wrong, let's laugh about it. And you did something good, let's celebrate that. You know, I think this is a way of building each other up. Yeah. But relationships are tough. How do you feel about love as a, on a personal level? You, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen everything. Right. You've seen all kinds of couples getting married, getting divorced. Does that affect you personally? Do you, do you tend to be maybe a little more skeptical about love or more realistic? What, what's your viewpoint? At this age... And after going through so many relationships before I met my husband, mm -hmm. which I will say maybe if I was straight, I would have had maybe five divorces. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, my pattern was live with somebody for three years, get bored and leave. I don't blame. That was my, that was my pattern for many years yeah. until I met my husband 15 years ago and got married 10 years ago. But the point is that, you know, that 
getting to know someone intimately and accepting them and allowing the relationship to change as you go along. It cannot stay the same. That's right. It evolves. And I, I think everything is cyclical. Correct. In life, everything, especially relationships. Of course. What, big question for you, mm -hmm. what is the key ingredients that keep you and your husband together after 31 years? Well, as you know, I don't have a filter and I keep it real <laughs> at all times. Right. I think I am way too practical and way too pragmatic mm -hmm. to get divorced. Divorces are stupid and expensive and right. unnecessary. They're bad for business. Right. They're bad right. for money. Mm -hmm. And for what? Grass is not necessarily greener on the other side. And if it is, maybe because there's too much fertilizer there. Right. And we know what fertilizer is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my husband and I had a very crazy, fun, volatile relationship because we're both crazy. Right. Uh, but we celebrate our crazy and we're a different kind of crazy. I think our common denominators were very driven and we had the same goals. Um, we got married very young and we were poor. Mm. And basically we just wanted to achieve success and to get somewhere in life. And I think that in the pursuit of wealth, we, we gave up a lot uh, because we've grown apart and then we had to get back together and grow apart. You know, it's cyclical, right? I think ultimately we've built a very strong foundation. You know, it's right. like a tree with strong roots. Mm -hmm. So every time there's a storm, you know, the leaves can go this way or that way, but ultimately right, right, of course. it's the roots that are in place that keeps us together. And I love him. Mm. It irritates the hell out of me. At times, of and course. And he's fucking crazy. <laughs> but I love him. He's my crazy. Of course. What part do you think you played mm. in keeping this marriage together? I'm going to give more credit to Victor. Really? I wanted to get rid of him a few times. I tried to divorce him. Right. It didn't work out. He wouldn't leave. Right. He right. would not leave. <laughs> I said, that's it. Right. We had attorneys. And we had... You know, attorneys that are barracudas. Right. And we got the, the attorneys that, adversaries that are adversaries amongst each other. And so I was ready to call it quits a few times, but this man would not leave. Good for him. He Good said, no, him. I'm not leaving. I love you. No, you don't. Right. But he wouldn't. I think he fought really hard to stay married, harder than I did. And it's kind of important, I think, to have that person that is committed to fight for it, for what the, you know. He was fighting for it much more than I was. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, any man who has the balls to do that. I'm going to keep him. I'm going to keep him. That's yeah. a keeper. Yeah, yeah. Because very few men have balls that size these days. Of course, of course. And that's the problem. I think a lot of people are willing to give up. You know, you fall in love and... You know what, we've been sold a pipe dream. Yeah. I think it's a pipe dream. Give me a break. Rom-coms. It doesn't, like, all of this, what's supposed to happen? Butterflies or whatever, right? Right, right. Okay, maybe it happens initially, but you can't tell me that after 15 years you see your husband and you get butterflies. Exactly. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and I think the movies are responsible in the sense that they I'm have... i start with Disney, okay? Right, yeah. They told us a bad story as little girls. Right. I don't need a prince to save me. I never thought I did. Right. I'm saving myself and I can save the prince while I'm at it, okay? Of course, of course, of course. Which I don't do anyway. Right, no, and again, it's challenging. It really is. Yeah. And again, even sexually, which by the way, I'm gay as you know, but yeah. I never understood in movies how whenever two, a man and a woman gets together, the guy always picks up the woman before he has sex for her. I know. It's Does retarded. that really happen? I don't understand. No. Okay. For instance, it's like, oh, I'm going to try that with a guy. No, it doesn't work. I mean, you know, I no, always you, wondered. I tried sex with girls before. Right. Like, right. You weren't into it? It's kind of like foreplay. Right. Then I realized, you know what? Nah. I like the male body. Right. Of course. Of course. But you know what? I think I'm glad that I tried it. Right, of course. Maybe I'll try it again sometime. I don't know. But, you know, at this point... I kind point, of like what's words. happening now that is a little bit more fluid. I don't know. Yeah, I think everyone should be open-minded. Listen, as long as you do what you want to do and I do what I want to do and we don't hurt anyone in the process... Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm all about it. 
And I get that's another show. Let's have a sex show after this one. Oh definitely. my God, absolutely. <laughs> one of my favorite topics. Okay, so let's move on to all your amazing events. Your events, your weddings especially, have been called transformative. Mm -hmm. Where do you get these incredible ideas? Because you know I stalk you on Instagram and everywhere else. I stalk you too, yeah. so don't say it's a, a two-way street. <laughs> but every event, every installation is unique and different and just mind-blowing. Where, do where does it come from? Lana, as you know, and I could say it now that we are working together. And I had the privilege of doing a son's wedding. And, you know, and believe me, I've worked with a lot of people and everyone says, I want something different. But the moment you start showing them something different, they wow. pull back and say, no, 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 that's too different. You're one of the few people that I've worked with that have shown you things and you said, yeah, it's different, but I want even more different. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately, I work better with people like yourself and without dropping names, Serena Williams was like you, by the way. Maybe not I as crazy, maybe not as crazy, let me be real. I win, I know. Crazy in a crazy, way. Crazier, craziest. Right, but in a f way that she encourages you to go further mm -hmm. and she understands like you do, considering that you have given so many parties, and that's, again, a show by itself. Which, as you know, is very hard because it's like you're competing with yourself. Yes. Because I can't do what I did before because now I'm bored with it. And I'm sure you're there every day of your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the guests that arrive, they are expecting the same. You know, for a while there, I don't know, I think it was like in the 2000s, people walk into my event. It's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Oh, yeah, Preston was here again. He's doing a lot of flowers. Mm -hmm. So I had to switch gears and Absolutely. try not to do too many flowers, do something different. Yeah. So I think ba the base of it is my inspiration comes, believe it or not, a lot of times from dreams. I mean, we had a meeting yesterday, and this morning I was having a dream about the wedding that we're doing for your son. I'm I can't so remember sorry. the detail of it, but it was there. And I also like the idea that people like yourself, they inspire me to push further. I call you an art director, and this is the first time I've I'm ever so called. flattered. This is the first time that I've ever called a client that, by the way. Well, you're a party god in my book, so. Oh, I mean, in the sense that you know, you have given me cues in what to look, to what, you know, the visions to think differently and to explore it and to take it to the next level. And I love the fact that you make up your mind. You're not one of those clans that's like, I'm not wishy -washy. oh, thank God. No, unfortunately, my son found a girl that I adore. She's a lot like me. It's either this or it's this. There's not, well, I don't know. I could never handle her. That is a gift. Yeah. I'm so I love her. I'm so grateful. Right. So she makes life a lot easier because sometimes brides are difficult. They don't know. So thank God Lauren is normal. I really love talking to her. She's and she she makes him a nicer person. Yeah. And so I actually want her to feel like the ultimate princess walking down the aisle. She deserves it. How long have they been together? For quite a while, right? Uh, almost three years. Almost three years. At least they get to know each other. They have lived together. All they live together. So important. I know. Don't get married before you try it out. No, and they're both very realistic, I think, and pragmatic people. Right. So have great faith that they're going to be. Um, the exception to the rule in that they're going to be together forever. Of course. Besides, divorce is not an option. As yeah, far as I'm this... concerned, look, if you're getting married, right? whether you like each other or not, I don't care. You stay right together way. and you make it work just like my grandparents right? and my parents and my husbands and you just do it. Okay? I have a client at the moment that is going through the big, and I have to ask you how you feel about it, the prenup issue that again the groom is incredibly wealthy mm -hmm. the bride has a family that is well off i mean mm -hmm. the middle but you know there's a resistance how do you feel about prenups especially in today's day that people get divorced so quickly i think that prenups are very important because they protect both sides mm. and i think that when you walk into any arrangement whether it's business or personal I like knowing what I'm walking into and what game I'm playing. And I need to know um, the rules of the game. Right, of course. So I think that it gives you 
um, a much better perspective on how things are, what to expect. Mm. And I think it also encourages each party to pursue their own career or whatever um, they need to do so right. that nobody, so that one party doesn't rely on the other for mm. financial success or, you know, I think it encourages independence, which is very important. In a way, it empowers both parties that, you know, this is Absolutely. not about money. This is about us growing together. And I want to know what I'm walking into. Right, of course. So these are the arrangements, because afterwards, if you don't do that, divorces are crazy expensive. Right. Lawyers walk away with hundreds of thousands, or if not millions of dollars, depending on the size of the estate, as you know. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think it's um, practical in right, today's world. Right, of course, of course. And I can tell you that, you know, when you work very hard to build a foundation for your children, you want to be able to protect that and keep it in your bloodline. Right. It's interesting because one of my very high-end clients, and I'm going to really be very careful in not mentioning names, sure. you know, they were about to get married. He's a very billionaire guy. And we were ready to move in and set up this elaborate event. And a week before, we get a phone call saying, listen, the wedding is off because I'm not signing a prenup. And you know, you know, you just can't switch gears what? when the production and everything else is wedding. But anyway, so I said, okay, what should we do? They're like, listen, hold on to everything. No, you cannot hold on to the flowers. You're gonna to have to buy them again. Hold on to everything that you're building. And anyhow, the bottom line was, both of them went to the Caribbean together. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, she probably put out there or something because he came back with a different tone. And, and they the solved it, it works. and you it worked out. It all, but only if you swallow. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> the bottom line. I don't know what she did, but it worked. I mean, you know, whatever she was, she wanted, it was given to so her. So the prenup was signed. Yeah, but it's still an issue. It's definitely still an issue sure. at times. Yes, definitely. Money is uh, important, but also sometimes. I think it depends on how you look at it. Right, of course, of course. I look at it as a, a tool. Right. Or what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. for fun, um, to help you have, others. You have no problem spending for what you want to create an amazing evening. Where did that come from? Is that part of your culture in entertaining? The I think idea? that you get what you pay for. Right, but your party is a little bit legendary. You gave an engagement party for your son and your son-in-law that looked like any over-the-top wedding that I've ever done, ever. Thank you. So, I mean, it's like, where do you go from there? That's why you're here, because uh, I don't know where to go from here. Uh, and so you're the only person that create the fantasy that lives in my head. Right. No one else could do this. Right. Thank you. Thank you're, you. Thank you. Because you're a party god. But how do, have you always thought of into Your party is a legendary. So even when Victor and I just got married, when we were... I just saw pictures downstairs, right? Yeah, we we didn't have money. We were just trying. We still had parties and stuff on a really, really tight budget. Mm. You know, we had to budget everything. But we still loved entertaining and having people over. And uh, my house was always full of people no matter what, just because we live life to the fullest. Right. I believe that every day that you're here is a celebration. It's a blessing. Because your life can end tomorrow or in a day. A week and a month, we never know. Mm. But is that part of your Ukrainian background? Which, by the way, I've been to the Ukraine many times to Dude, give well, speeches, crazy, actually. Really? Yes. Um, to care. Parties? Pl uh, events. events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that part of the culture of I entertaining? Think a little bit. I think that we are all, um, well, I think we're all a little crazy, especially the women. Right. And we we love people, we love to entertain, mm. and we like to do things big. You know, mm. go big or go home. Yeah, love that. Um, and I think for the most part, we just celebrate life. Wow. I suspect that's a part of, you know, it's in our blood. Yeah. If we do it, we do it big. We either love you or we hate you. Yeah. We're very uh, opinionated and very strong that way. I'm so glad you There's love no me. There's no half-assing everything. <laughs> and we drink vodka like it's water. I'm pretty sure that it's flowing in my veins. In fact, my father is very proud of the fact uh, of, of the fact that when I was conceived, right, there was a lot of vodka flowing in his veins. So I guess I'm a vodka baby. 
I could see that, and I've done other weddings from your part of the world, mm -hmm. and I've seen the bottle of vodka and the tables, yeah, along with the caviar in quantity. Absolutely. Oh my God, vodka and caviar—that's like the staples, right, of our dinner. I can't eat like this every day because, obviously, it's not healthy. I, you know, I work out. I try right. to eat as healthy as possible, but yeah, that's mm -hmm. our way of life. So I read something very interesting. Uh, I read that you did an event, or you do a lot of events for Sesame Street? Oh yeah, actually I've been doing this benefits that they give yearly for the entire company for the past 15 or 20 years. Wow. And it's really fun. Come on, we all grew up with Sesame Street. Yeah, who doesn't love Sesame yeah, Street? Yeah, yeah, no, it's quite wonderful. So, and you, is that something you do every year? Every year, yes. Every May, wow. usually I have it in May or June. You know, I want to ask you about your most awful experience in doing a party. Like I think I mentioned to you at one of my previous parties, the um, design company I oh, did God. not listen. And one of the tables, the tops, which was all made out of mirror and glass, half of the table fell. Oh my God. Uh, I hear stories was, like that and it gives me nightmare. That's Thank God nobody was seriously hurt and it was right. just a little blood, but it was a disaster. Mm -hmm. So do you have any stories like that? Did anything ever happen to you? Um, or are you too good for that? Uh, first of all, I have to say without doubt or without questioning that every single event that we do, something potentially goes wrong. And what helps me a lot is the many years of experience that I have mm -hmm. to be able to solve it as, as whenever, whenever it's going wrong. It could be anything. You mm -hmm. plan this entire evening. The evening is not working out because the vibes are not great mm -hmm. and you have to improvise mm -hmm. and the client is not going to be aware of it because you're making it sound very smoothly. But I think that's part of the events. And one of the things that I've learned is to secure situations. A situation like what you just said happened to me maybe like 30 years ago, oh, wow. and I learned my lesson. I did this event, and it was the first time that we were doing tall centerpieces. Mm -hmm. And you know, the customer and I had a love fest, and she invited me to the event. And I'm sitting there and her table, because she loves me so of much. Course. And I look back and- And like, you have to sit at my table oh. during our party. I want you to know that. Okay. I know you'll be busy, but still, oh, I'm so, so sorry. Sweet of you. Thank you. But anyhow, so there I am sitting at this table, and to this side of my eyes, I see one of this event falling on this woman's head. Oh my God. Literally. And the next thing you know, the event stopped, and the Watch ambulance this. came. Yeah. One of the tall arrangements took her to the emergency room. The client soon, remember this is 20, 25 years ago. The client sued me. I had to provide client free flowers for the client for an entire year. At least we were able to arrange it. And you know, luckily the woman had a bump on her head. She didn't have a, you know, a concussion or anything like that. But that, and I was there to witness it. It's horrifying and it's probably something you will never, ever, I ever will forget. I guess I learned my lesson. Yeah. Make sure that whenever you do any kind of arrangements, yeah. no matter mm -hmm. metal, yeah. that it doesn't fall. I mean, you, you kind of learn these things. This was horrifying because my beloved canines, Lucy and Lily, right. are always with me and they were next to me. And what happened exactly? Well... And this was the engagement party, This right? was my guess. Right. This engagement party. And... Um, because we're from Ukraine, we have a lot of food on the table. Right. Part of a the lot culture. Of and lots of alcohol. There has to be vodka, tequila, cognac, whiskey, and gotten, you know. That's an entire bar. We're drinkers. Right, right. And so they didn't consider the fact that there was a lot of stuff on the table, plus the charger place, you know, all the place settings, everything. And I said to them, so did a few other people, this doesn't look like it's sturdy enough to hold it. We should, it should be reinforced with something else, but they didn't listen. And you did say that, though. Many times. Right. Even some of my staff said it. And early on, as we were beginning our evening, my side of the table cracks and falls. Fortunately, fortunately, it did not fall on the side where my dogs were laying, because God forbid it, they could have been decapitated. In which case, the plot party planner would have been dead. <laughs> They're dead right there. I mean, they would be so dead. Right. There would be no bringing them back to life because my dogs are my life. Mm. 
but it did fall on my cousin and there was some blood. It was rough. And you know, but, and, I, and I think that happens a lot. And I didn't even apologize initially. Oh my God, I won't. See, I'm livid. It's not okay. And I think that happened, Lana, because a lot of companies take on too many events. Yeah. And what happened is... They don't listen to anybody. They don't listen. They don't. You know, these details that you should be paying attention. That's Absolutely. one of the things, by the way. At this time of my life, I only accept two events a month. That's, That's amazing. it. I have all of it. You know, I Ooh. answer your text like immediately. You know, I'm there. I'm yeah. listening. I'm paying attention to all of the details. Mm -hmm. If you take 10 events, you can't handle everything. Absolutely. And this kind of a shit happens. Excuse my yeah. friends. This, yeah. this is what happens. And I feel badly for these people. And I feel worse for you, considering that you had to experience it. Yeah, and I was trying very hard not to lose my shit because I didn't want to ruin the night for the kids. But my God, I was livid, livid. You know, I could have gone Dracarys like the dragons from the Game of Thrones on everyone. It was so bad. Did it ruin your evening, or could you put it aside and Please. continue? We're from Ukraine, no. A couple of shots of vodka with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it could have it, it could have been much worse. Thank God it wasn't. Mm. Um, and you know yeah. what I said? I really celebrate all of the new companies that are coming. And, you know, after being in business for over 40 yeah. years, I've seen so many new people that have come. Some of them are amazing. But I think what gives you longevity is experience, mm -hmm. is knowing your craft, is knowing to expect what might go wrong and mm -hmm. try to really say, oh, I'm not going to do this and this mm -hmm. for this not to go wrong. I think that's very important to do. So I think it's great for all of these people that are starting to just give themselves some time to get some experience. What haven't you done? What do you want to do but you have not done? Please, let's do a movie together. Okay. What are we I don't know. About? I don't know exactly what it is, but I would love to art direct a Be, wonderful I'm piece. In. You know that really. One of the things Should that I love that. about what uh, Tom Ford, I think it was years ago, he did a movie and he directed it and he produced it and he, whatever. I am so flattered. Are you kidding? It would be an honor. I, I think we would be create great, a masterpiece. Absolutely. There's something about creating. First of all, my one addiction that I still have. And I do it while I'm working out, which is at least two hours a day, mm -hmm. because that's my new addiction. And I'm weekends three hours a day is watching Netflix. And I live I, on Netflix. Absolutely. Literally live on Netflix. And I love storytelling. And that's what we're doing events, by absolutely. the way. We tell a story. Yep. Every, every, every event, I think, is a production. Absolutely. And we tell a story through that production. You have to think of it as a And broad... the bride and groom just happen to be the stars of that production. You got it. And I think of it almost as a Broadway play, yep. that at the beginning, there has to be something to get your attention. It's like, oh my God, this is just beginning. Yeah. What's going to be next? But you have to follow through. And I like the idea of every 15 or 20 minutes, there's some kind of a wonderful surprise. Remember, you're there for Perfect. five, six hours. Not and in my case, it's probably nine to 10 hours. Nine. You know, we're serving breakfast at 4 a.m., right? And we're starting at seven. Yes. But I, but I feel like non-Ukrainian people probably have shorter events, but you know. Yeah, most people, they have five, six hours stop. Yeah, we can't stop. Actually, everyone's a hostage. They can't leave. Unless I declare the party over, they're not leaving. They have to dance what and drink What do you do? Lock the door kind of a situation? Yes, I have security. <laughs> Lots of security. They can't leave. No, they have to party. But you know... Lana, I think you understand about entertaining them. If you're yeah. going to keep them there for that long, give, yeah. you know. We feed them, we get them drunk, we provide shoes, whatever right, you need. Right, right, right. I think one of the biggest compliments for me is when you have this guest at a party and they don't want to leave. That's yeah. what you're saying. You know you got him. Absolutely. You know, it, it, there's something that is going on in this room yeah. that, you know, the, the time frame that the clan booked they don't want to leave the event. Is you know they're having a great time because of the f environment or the That's music or whatever. Them. Yeah. Are you happy, Preston? Am I happy? Yes. At seventy-four years old that I'm about to be, I feel that I. And don't get me wrong, Lana. I've had business years that has been shit. I mean, yeah. remember that I'm in the luxury business. So COVID must have been COVID very... Actually, it wasn't as bad. 
ironically you mean enough. there are other people besides me having parties? Actually, yes. You know, we were lucky enough to do a party in the Mustique Island, which was really interesting because we had to arrive there a week before and we were in quarantine for a week that they paid us not to do anything. And uh -huh. then actually did the event in this secluded island. That's and amazing. I did another part in the Maldives Islands that it was the same situation that all of my crew of 75 arrived and we're all in quarantine and then did the event. So, you know, these two events without any expenditure really helped me in yeah, COVID. I right. walked away from COVID and it's like, yeah, I awesome. love COVID. For the first time in my life, I had two or three months that I didn't have to work. What did it, you do? Were you bored? No. Was your no. husband with you during the whole time? And not, you guys, he like, went, no, no. He went to his apartment and came back in the evening. But I got up at four o'clock in the morning, went for an hour, two hour run, went shopping for food at the supermarket first thing. The only thing that I know to cook is in a slow cooker. Right. I don't know how to cook anything. I just put all the shit in the slow cooker and yeah. six hours. Watched Netflix for the rest of the day. I wrote. I loved it. I what did you write? I have a journal. I don't know about yeah. that. Years ago, there was a woman by the name of Julia Cameron mm -hmm. that has this book by the name of The Artist's Way. Mm -hmm. And she suggests that every day you should write at least three pages of ideas and of different concepts and different mm -hmm. creative. And that really have helped me throughout the years. But anyhow, no, I, I had no problem with it. It probably will never happen again, but... You know. Hopefully not, because... How was it for you? Know. Well, you know, I'm a little different. My life Lots changed. of energy. My life hasn't changed much. You know, my office is here on property. Right. So we went to work. We still did the same thing we always do. Your husband's office is in property also? Well, no. So here's the deal with my husband. We cannot be confined to the same space for too long because he will annoy me. But first of all, time out. <laughs> you are living in a compound. Yeah. So, I mean, your husband could be in like one end of the compound and you could be at the no, other end. No, he had to go for both of our, um, for our sanity, for our peace of mind. So he went to work at, the, you know, in our building. Right. And he was very lonely because he loves people and he loves his oh, people. Oh, he's a people person. Oh, yes. He's mm. addicted to people. Right. And a few people came to work as, you know, the rules allowed, and some people worked from home. So he was very lonely uh -huh. because all his people were not there because they are like his kids. He loves everybody. I had to get very creative because he goes out to dinner with clients and whatever, right? Perfect. But he couldn't go to dinner during COVID. There was nowhere to go. I thought, you know what? This is not acceptable. So I got caterers to cater dinners for him in the building, in our office. And he can call whoever, clients, friends, and he can have dinner. The, you know, the same schedule, a couple of right, days a week. Right, right. He would have dinner with clients or employees or whoever. And so this, con this consistency was very important. So he continued to have his dinners in the building. Although I think a lot of his friends had to sneak out of the house because the wives wouldn't allow it. They were afraid that their husbands would get sick and bring right, home COVID. Of course, of course. I had my alone time with my dogs, my sanity, my space, which I... Are you good being alone? Made. Yes. Me too. I love my own company a lot. Mm. I don't need... Well, I need my dogs. Yeah, of course. But that's about it. So I really enjoy my own company. I meditate. I write. I watch Netflix. Right. So I you didn't have any people. problems with it either. Of course not. I'm a, I'm, I'm a happy camper. For the most part, I'm very even keeled. And so... COVID, COVID, whatever, we're good. Yeah, a lot of people change, though. I don't know if you noticed. I noticed. Some people got a little bit crazier. A lot crazier. The event business just went wild after COVID. Yes, because you couldn't do anything for so many years. I, I'll bet weddings had to be postponed. Absolutely. And, you know, and I think... Divorces had to be postponed. <laughs> yep. And you do divorce parties? No, I Why don't. Not? If, I mean, if you really want out. First of all, no one ever asked me. Maybe if somebody asked but me. Can you imagine if you're doing weddings, why not do fabulous divorces? I have a lot of ideas for that, too, if you ever need. And, you know, and I think what happened after COVID, which I'll be honest with you, for the first time in my life recently, I had to tell a client, listen, we don't work well together. And this was after COVID, by the way. And we were working together. Well, in fact, it's a new... In the ass. No comment. 
The bottom yeah. line was that there was a lot of energy coming from different sources, so we weren't able to manage the product. Mm -hmm. You know, like for instance, I speak to you when you're mm -hmm. wedding, and I don't speak, to, and your, it's your decision, but if you're getting from the daughter, from you. And I go to the kids and I make sure that they're happy with this. Of this course, of course, of yeah. course. And this is important, by the way, because yeah. otherwise, if you're getting information from five people, yeah, it's a disaster. And each one are different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eventually I say, listen, and they agree, this is not working for both of us. This is your money back. I don't need to keep your money. This is your money back. And as it is in this, it's actually in the news today, they ended up hiring a new planners that nine days later was fired. So, you know, so anyhow, my right, point okay. is, is this happened after COVID when people were ready to celebrate and the energy was like, I'm mm -hmm. going to get out there. And, you know, it's a little bit crazy in that sense. Do you find that people are now living more in fear maybe because there's so much fear mongering out there you know afraid of dying afraid of COVID, afraid of this afraid of that do you find I, that that's true i think COVID made us more aware of death you know we never had a situation where that thousands of people were dying around us and i don't know exactly how that might have affected us mm -hmm. but this is where you know we never had a plague before yeah, that I know of, lifetime. in my lifetime anyway, maybe in other people, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that really affected us psychologically in many ways. Tell me, what trends do you see now in the party slash wedding world? You know, Lana, I really think trends are evil. I really do. Really? And I, the reason that I think that is trend make people keep repeating the same mm -hmm. thing over and over and over again which goes against everything that I believe in, considering that, you know, you want to be able to create something new. Once that said, mm -hmm. what I've seen a lot of is, of course, the ceiling installations. You know, people are hanging shit mm -hmm. on the ceiling like but crazy. But you doing that years ago. That's like, that's copying Preston. Everybody copies Preston. You do know that. But, you know, that's my point. So I think, for instance, you, you're a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to follow what you never did, and you don't really care about it. I don't it. even follow what I did last time. Thank you. But I feel like trends are a big part of, just like in fashion, we mm -hmm. see trends. Mm -hmm. But what, what have you seen other people do, like lately? And again, everyone mm -hmm. is doing flowers up the wazoo. You know, and again, one of the things that I'm loving about what we're doing, it has some flowers, but it has a lot of other concepts. My engagement Our party wedding looked, is going to be trend-setting. You know Let's what? Let's put it that way. At the engagement party, I swear, I feel like a flower garden threw up. You saw the link. There were so many flowers. I have shown it to so many people, and they were like, oh, my God, insane. that wedding I know. looks great. That right. wedding looks amazing. Excuse me, that's just engagement party. I was so excited to do this, and I was I feel like I pulled out all the great stuff, but I also knew that for the wedding, I can do it better because you were doing the wedding. But not only that, if you remember when we first started and I was showing your concept, I was coming from a floral point of view. You're like, Preston, um, I like what, no, 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 no. Let I us did that. Yeah, let us move away from that. And what emerged, I think, is going to be something that people are going to be talking about like crazy because all of the concepts are so unique. I'm very excited about it. Right. What's more, most important to me is it's very much who they are, who Lauren and Lawrence are. It right. just represents them and their energy. And I think that um, it's a great, beautiful beginning to their love story. Right. Let's talk about the couple a little bit, because again, I've had the pleasure of meeting them a couple of times. They're going to be together for a long time. I know. They I really are. That. They really are. I see the vibe. And I'm like you, by the way. I don't listen to words. I feel vibe. And I have the yeah. feeling. And I see the energy. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's what. Yeah. And I think they are really going to be. You know what's really funny? Before, as a teenager, my son would say, I'm never going to marry a woman like my mom. You're so tough. And oh, my God, I was somewhere between Hitler and Mussolini. <laughs> because I was strict. I wanted good grades and hard right. work and all, all the right things. Now he says that um, he's going to be much worse than I was as a parent, much stricter. But I feel like he's marrying a girl who's a lot like his mother. That's right. why I love her. Yeah. She's strong. She's tough. She's smart. 
And very you guys get along very well. Oh, I love her. Can yeah. I just close by saying, or by asking, first of all, it was great to be here. Thank you so but much. Why are you doing this show, by the way? I'm really interesting. I saw the first wow. episode last night, which I, you know, this the is business I, of death. Yes. Did you see how I was shaving the dead man's head? Can I be honest with you? I loved it so much. What? about it would you love about shaving a dead man's head first of all i've been curious about death and dead bodies since i was very very little i don't right. know why i have no idea why i learned a lot that i you know clearly my sister passed away a few years ago and i did her funeral but the, first of all i didn't realize that people did that louis vuitton lining how about the fox for and, inside the casket oh my god I have to go back and redo my paperwork now because I'm freaking. <laughs> I have been really just underselling this whole thing to myself. Right. So, this show, it's actually, it started as me saying, Trey, who is my best friend, business partner, and producer and director, said, I want to do something. Sorry, on my bucket list that no. I haven't done yet. Right. I'm interested in the porn business, in the prostitution business, in the, in the business of death, marijuana, and blah, 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 blah. I don't know anything about these things from a business perspective. I'm just curious, right? right. Because I think that people are like books. Mm -hmm. Some books are, you open the first page, you read it, and you say, you know what? I don't want to, I'm not going there. I can predict the ending in five seconds. I'm not interested. Let me put it back. But then there are some people, those books that you open and you read and you just want to keep reading mm. because you know that it's there's a good possibility that it might be like a classic. Right. right? So I, I look, I decided to just adventure into the lives of people mm. and experiences and have fun with it and just, you know, whatever I'm curious in. And Tracy said, Girl, we should film that because... If that's what you want to do, I feel like it's probably a lot of fun and other people might be interested in seeing that as well. Right, of course. And all the best ideas start with, hey, try. Yeah, girl. <laughs> and this is just well, how this was born. This is our love child. Is anything is like the beginning show, you're onto something. But did you really? see how I was shaving the dead man's head? I loved it so much. First of all... It was so therapeutic. I don't know why. I was so happy to be in there. It sounds fucked up, but I was so happy. You were talking <laughs> to someone that shaves his head. <laughs> so the entire experience was very interesting to me. First of all, the fact that the hair keeps growing once you die. Who would have thunk it? That nails grow while you're dead. Right? What the fuck? I mean, it's like... What about the fact that this... Maybe I'll get hair when I grow. I don't know. had sex with her husband like one last ride? Right. He must have been the fuck of the century, right? Like, are you kidding me? What is that? Your question is like, excuse me, could he get it up? But but he <laughs> said it. So I'm a very creative person. So when I hear something. You have to see it in your mind. To, I have to visualize. That's how I process information. So when he said it, I kind of went, oh. The hell is that working? And then, you know, the wheels start moving and I got to start figuring out. And I need to know how things work. That's like my thing. Lana, you're onto something. Thank you. And thank you for having thank me. Thank you so much for being here. You're amazing. I have thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you. <laughs>